At the end of the lesson, the pupils should be able to identify the parts of a plant. Describe each part of a plant and its function. Compare flowers, fruits, and seeds. Describe the parts and functions of each part of a flower. And appreciate the importance of each part of a plant. Look at the pictures. What do you see in the pictures? Yes. These are gardens full of flowers. Can you describe them? What are the parts of a plant? Roots, stem, and leaves are present in all plants. But only some plants can bear flowers and fruits. Today, we are going to learn about other parts of a plant. How would you describe flowers, fruits, and seeds? What are their functions? What makes the plant beautiful? Flowers are the most beautiful and colorful part of a plant. Their various colors and fragrant odor attract insects such as bees and butterflies, which are drawn near to suck the flower's nectar. When they do, the flowers become pollinated. Pollination is the first step in reproduction of plants. This happens when the pollen grains transfer from the stamen to the pistil of a flower. Flowers are the reproductive part of a plant. They develop into fruits that have seeds that will grow into new plants. They have different parts. The main parts of a flower are petals, pistil, stamen, and sepal. Flowers that contain all these parts are called complete flowers. Those that lack any of these parts are called incomplete flowers. The petals are the colorful parts of the flower that attract insects. Collectively, these petals are called corolla. At the base of the flower are tiny leaf-like structures that cover and protect the bud and hold the petals together called sepals. They are called calyx as a whole. The stamen is the male reproductive part of the flower. It consists of the filament and the anther. The filament is the thin stalk that holds the anther. The anther bears the pollen grains, which carry the sperm cells. The pistil is the female reproductive part of a flower. It contains the stigma, the sticky part that traps the pollen grains, the ovary which contains the ovule, which carries the egg cell, and the style, a stalk that connects the stigma to the ovary. The ovary later becomes the fruit, while the ovule becomes the seed. Look at the picture. Are you familiar with them? Have you ever eaten them? Fruits come from the flowers of plants. They vary in size, shape, color, and taste. They are important because they not only store food, but also carry and protect the seeds. The seeds are the part that grow and develop into new plants. They are found inside a fruit. The fruit protects them. Seeds differ in shape and size. Some seeds such as beans and peanuts are edible or can be eaten. There are two kinds of seeds. Seeds with only one seed leaf are called monocot, while seeds with two seed leaves are called dicot. Coconut is an example of a monocot. Tamarind is an example of a dicot. Seeds have parts too. The seed coat, which is the outer covering, protect the seeds. The seed leaf or cotyledon contains the stored food. The young plant that grows into a new plant is called embryo. The endosperm provides food to the embryo. Remember, each part of a plant has an important function, from the roots that absorb water and nutrients, to the stem that distributes water to the different parts, to the leaves that make food using photosynthesis, and to the flowers and fruits that spread the plant seeds. Humans need plants to provide us with both oxygen and food. To know how well you understand our lesson let's have some oral exercise. 1. What do you call the reproductive part of a plant? Two. What part of the plant is important because they do not only store food, but they also carry and protect the seeds? Three. What do you call the part that grows and develops into a new plant?
Very good. You got them right. Good luck on your quiz. To plant a seed is to believe in tomorrow. Sandia Seed Company.